In 2012, my bluegrass band Delame auditioned for a program called American Music Abroad. American Music Abroad is funded by a grant from the US State Department and administered by the Association for American Voices. The American Music Abroad program carefully auditions and selects 10 bands a year to travel throughout the world for cultural exchange, focusing on communities with little or no access or exposure to American music. These bands, ranging from Cajun to folk, jazz, bluegrass, and blues, will perform concerts at embassies and at orphanages. They'll teach master classes at local schools. They'll collaborate with local musicians and then perform with those same musicians at local concerts. My band had been encouraged to audition by another band that we'd known who had also performed with American Music Abroad throughout Southeast Asia. We thought, why not? We needed a gig. Plus, with any luck, they'd send us somewhere with a beach during the depths of the New England winter. <laughs> After a lot of speculating and wondering where we might go, we found out that we'd been selected to go on an extensive six-week tour of six countries. Uzbekistan, <laughs> Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and we would start out the whole, week, the whole trip in Islamabad, Pakistan. I'm not gonna lie, I had to look up where most of those countries were located. <laughs> when we released this information on social media to our fans, we started to get a lot of interesting messages back. At that time in 2012, we were one of the only all-female bluegrass bands on the scene. Don't go, they said. It's far too dangerous for a bunch of women. It was, after all, just the year before that Osama bin Laden had been assassinated in his Pakistan compound by the United States. Things weren't exactly friendly between the countries. I'm not going to lie, some of these messages really started to get under my skin. I worried, and I read the news obsessively. I even wrote my own will that I sealed in a small envelope and left with my boyfriend at the time, my husband now. But after a lot of careful thinking and consideration, we decided that this was an opportunity we really couldn't pass up on. So we packed our bags for the sweltering heat in Pakistan to the sub-zero temperatures in Kazakhstan and set off on the trip. Everything went pretty smoothly until we changed planes in Qatar. As I entered the cabin, a hush fell over the plane. I remember looking up and seeing that almost all of the people on the plane were men in traditional Pakistani dress. Many of them were wearing ihram clothing, which is uh, similar to a toga made out of terry cloth material. It's what you wear when you're going on a pilgrimage to Mecca. I had lowered my eyes and proceeded back to my seat, feeling the stares of these strange men, and I sat down quickly. Immediately later, a stewardess came around and rounded all of us up and segregated us to an all-female area of the plane. There wasn't much we could say to one another then, but it was obvious that we were all feeling a little bit rattled. We landed in Islamabad a while later to a, a milky evening sky and thousands of people waiting for family members who are coming back from Mecca. We were picked up by our foreign service officials and loaded into a giant government bomb-proof vehicle. <laughs> Along the way, they told us that uh, our hotel rooms had been canceled because of a bomb threat. But not to worry, we were going to be put up on the beautiful little college on the US compound. <laughs> Later that night, as we tried to sleep, we heard the call to prayer, and we ventured outside on the balcony to listen. The caretaker of the cottage, who is a local Pakistani man, shooed us back inside quickly. No, no, no. Women don't go out after dark here. As I tried to sleep a little while later, I, I couldn't shake this unease that had come over me. I'm a woman who grew up in rural Vermont. I got a degree in anthropology, but nothing could have possibly prepared me for the culture shock that I was feeling.
I just told myself to try and be strong and to be open to whatever should happen. Our first concert was at a women's college in Islamabad. I was standing backstage when I heard the first low rumble followed by screaming. We all gathered together backstage to try and figure out what was going on when one of our hosts ran in backstage and said that they were gonna have to open the auditorium doors immediately because the girls were about to tear them off their hinges. <laughs> it turns out that I had mistaken protest and anger but in reality, these girls were just so excited to see us, they couldn't wait any longer. The next minute, I found myself standing on stage in front of hundreds of Pakistani schoolgirls who were singing and clapping along to bluegrass music, <laughs> something they had never heard before in their entire lives. I was told later that this was likely the only live concert they'd ever seen. And to look up on stage and see five women Little did they know that it was equally incredible for us to be standing in front of them. After the show, we gathered together in little groups and took selfies and, and talked excitedly amongst one another. No anger, no resentment, just excited people getting together and sharing something of themselves. In the next week, we had a day off and decided to spend it going to the base of the Margala Hills with our public affairs officer, Rob, and our translator, Osfer. We were given strict orders to stay inside the vans, but somehow that day we finagled a little walking trip through the village. We strolled along cobbled streets with a chute running down the middle and goats running around everywhere. We were having a great time until we noticed that no one was around. The whole place felt very empty. We started to think that maybe this was our cue to leave. But at that moment, a gentleman with orange henna-colored hair stepped outside of his compound with a pitcher of water and two glasses. He asked us if we wanted some water, and we said yes. So we stood around drinking water with this man and as we did, I noticed that people had started coming out of their compounds, looking at us and smiling. After we were finished with our water, a young man came up to us and asked if we wanted to go see his house. So we said yes. We followed him up a rocky stone path to a small house with a tin roof. The father invited us inside and ceremoniously pulled a giant bottle of Mountain Dew out of the refrigerator. <laughs> and poured us each a glass. The young girl came around and offered us candies. We sat around with that family, talking about who we were and why we had come to Pakistan. We even sang them a traditional bluegrass song called I'll Fly Away. Some bright morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. To a land where joys will never end, I'll fly away. And then something happened that changed my worldview to this day. The father asked his young daughter to sing us a song called Lab Payati He Dua, written by Alama Iqbal, the national poet of Pakistan. It's a song that a lot of school kids sing, and it translates to, from Urdu. My longing comes to my lips as a supplication of mine. O oh God, may like the beauty of the candle be this life of mine. May the world's darkness disappear through this life of mine. May every place light up with the sparkling light of mine. When the girl was done singing, there was reverent silence. And the father stood. I want to ask you, he said, to go home to the people of the United States and tell them that not all Muslims are bad people. We are not bad people. That moment brought tears to my eyes. Here I was having just sat with this family, singing songs with them and enjoying their hospitality, and they still felt the need to tell us 
that they weren't bad people. I felt so much shame for all the fear I had felt before coming, before meeting these people face to face. Since that trip in 2012, I have been to 16 countries with American Music Abroad and programs like it. I've met foreign, servants, foreign service families who have devoted their lives to the idea that spreading American culture and friendship will make happier and safer communities globally. I believe that this kind of soft power has the ability to make safer worlds for us and our children. I know that the idea of world peace over a soft drink and a song might seem a little idealistic. <laughs> but when you have no other language to share, music creates the bridge which we can meet one another upon. So now, as a parting gift to all of you, I'd like to sing you just the first verse of La Peati He Dua, first sung to me by a young girl at the base of the Margala Hills. La peati he dua ban ke tamana meri Zindagi shaman ki surat ho khudaya meri Duri dunia ka meri dan se antera ho jai Harjaga mire chamakane si ujala ho jai. Labhaya ti he dua ban ke tamanna meri. Zindagi shaman ki surat ho. Hudaya Mary. Thank you.